what's up? It's Pete Thorne. Welcome to my studio. Hey, this is a video all about getting great, killer, awesome, humongous, rocking bass guitar sounds on your tracks. Using mainly either modelers or digital software uh, plugins and the like. So I'm a big fan of bass guitar, uh, John Paul Jones, Paul McCartney, Geddy Lee, Chris Squire, uh, Doug Pinnock. These are all my folks that I love on bass guitar. Doug was actually by my studio here a while ago and we had a really great discussion about how he approaches getting great bass guitar tones uh, on all the classic King's X material as well as the other bands that he's performed and recorded with. And I knew that his approach kind of harkened back to the Chris Squire method of keeping the lows intact and then distorting only the high frequencies, getting a fair amount of grind and, and distortion in his sound, but only on the high frequencies and leaving those lows intact so all your subs and low mids and stuff speak cleanly and clearly. So I want to show you how I approach doing that in my tracks using plugins. So first off, this is my Warwick Streamer bass, and this thing has been just awesome for recording bass for me. Um, well, listen to it first of all, just even through the mics on the camera. It's still going. Uh, it's just got this incredible sustain and kind of piano-like quality to the tone. Um, and I found when I got this bass, it just made me sound like a better bass player than I actually am. It's quite modern sounding, but that works in a modern rock context, obviously. You know, for something a little bit more traditional, uh, uh, musically speaking, I would probably uh, play a P bass or something. But this bass really works when I'm playing with, uh, you know, moderate to heavy distortion. It just speaks right through the track and keeps the bass really clear. So I love this thing. Now, mainly I'll use the P pickup. So I've got the, the, uh, the pickup selector or pan knob actually set to, to only work on this pickup. This bass has an active EQ on it, so you've got a treble control, a bass control, and then a mid-range control. And I find sometimes boosting up the mids on this instrument actually really helps it to cut through the track nicely. So mainly I use universal audio interfaces these days. I've got an Apollo 8P over here, and I'll plug the bass right into that high impedance input right on the front. This is UA's console interface. This controls all the inputs on the 8P. So we'll just go over to this one right here because that will be what I would be plugged into. Right up at the top here, there's a slot to add an effect on the input. And this is something that I'll pop in, generally speaking. This is just a preamp and it's also a compressor and a simple EQ. I'm not using any equalization on it. And I'll set the compressor to just give me a couple dB of gain reduction on the input. Okay, so that'll get recorded as I'm recording my track into Logic. Just a little bit of compression and probably just a little bit of tube, tubish coloration from the Century uh, tube channel strip preamp. Now down here in these slots right here, um, if I add an effect in here, something, something neat happens. Let's see, I'm just gonna go here and add a bass guitar amp. Let's say the bass uh, Ampeg uh, SVT Classic plug-in here from UA and uh, from, I believe it's, is it Brainworks? I think it's Brainworks. No, yeah, it's Brainworks. They make this, it's great. So I can track into Logic using this and record the sound if I want to, but I don't want to do that generally speaking because what I'm going to want to do is, like I was saying earlier, keep my low end uh, intact, unaffected, and only distort and kind of affect the high frequencies of the bass guitar. But what, what I find is if I just record a DI track with no amp sim or anything like that on it, uh, as I'm playing, it's pretty boring to play, especially if I'm trying to play, let's say, along with some distorted guitars. Um, just a DI bass, it's difficult to hear because it's so clean. It's like trying to cut an acoustic guitar track when there's distorted guitars playing. It's too clean, there's not enough coloration going on. So what I'll do sometimes is add an amp sim here in these slots right here, in these insert slots, and then over here on uh, UA console, you can hit this UAD monitor button. What happens then is you're gonna hear this plugin as you're tracking through it into your DAW, but you're not actually gonna record the effect of the plugin. So you can play through an effect and kind of get the coloration of the effect in your headphones or through your monitors as you're tracking, but then when you play the track back that you just recorded, it's gonna have no effect on it. So you're able to get a little bit of vibe going, a little bit of tone and coloration from a, an amplifier plugin, let's say, uh, but not, not track that which is nice because then you've just got that nice DI track uh, in your DAW then once you're done recording and you can affect it however you want. Now I'm making a video right now for a, uh, a, a plugin from Mercurial, it's a guitar amp plugin called the Euphoria. So I'm going to use that actually 
uh, in, the, in the rest of my video here. So this first track up here, it's labeled Bass DI. This is just that clean DI track that went in. Uh, once again, I was listening to an amplifier plug-in on the input, uh, but I wasn't recording that sound. So this is just a DI bass track. Now what I'll do instantly after I got that part recorded is I mult it okay, to, to uh, two other tracks. So in other words, I make two other tracks and then I just copy that down onto those other tracks. So now I've got the same bass part split across three tracks. Now many times in the studio, in the past and even now, uh, if a bass player was cutting a bass part, the engineer would often take a DI track as well as record maybe a mic'd up amplifier track at the same time. So you can see where I'm going with this. This is a way that I can actually just take that DI track, split it down onto these other tracks, and then maybe add some amp sounds on these other tracks right here. There's one really big advantage to doing it this way as well after the fact, is that these tracks are gonna be totally in phase and perfectly locked together. Traditionally, if you recorded a DI and a bass amp at the same time with the bass player playing, the bass amp track would always be a little bit later in time because of course a DI is really fast, it just would go right to tape and that sound would, re would get recorded. The amplifier track would go through the DI, out to the amplifier, come out through a speaker cabinet, through a microphone, console preamp, and then get recorded. So you would have to play with the phase a little bit of the tracks, generally speaking, in order to get them to line up and not cancel out frequencies. But when you just mult the same track across three like this, it's perfectly locked, perfectly in time, perfectly in phase. Let's take a look at my DI track here. Let's listen to what it sounds like, and I'm gonna show you how I'm processing it a little bit using a couple of plugins. So there it is. It's my Warwick bass, lots of sustain, sounds really good. Now I've got a, uh, an EQ here where I'm boosting up 60 hertz a little bit. And I'm also using a, a FET style compressor here and I'm getting about 4 dB of reduction on the loudest peaks. I'm going to turn off the compressor and the EQ. That's just the raw bass track as it went in. Turn the EQ back on, adding some sub, a little bit of compression to just tighten things up a little. So this gives me a great fundamental uh, bass guitar sound with a little bit of clarity on the top end but also some real full lows. I'm mainly looking for the sub and the full lows out of this track. Okay, I've malted the bass down to another track now, and on this track I'm going to add an amp sim. And I'm using the GK800 uh, uh, amp sim from Brainworks in UA. Now you can hear right away that this has way more mids to it. Okay, it's clean, no distortion. But if I turn off the amp sim, that's just DI now. just gives it that, you know, mic'd up speaker quality, a lot, lot more sort of fullness through the mids and character in the mid-range. It's got a great grunt to it. Still nice and clean, but with that great amp-like grunt. Now I'm going to turn on the DI as well. I'm going to add in the clean DI signal with this. You can just blend that in and mix and match those at any level you want. Okay, so with the DI, you've got all the sub, clarity, and click on the top end, uh, that transparency. And with the amp here, uh, you've got way more full lows, low mids, and just fills out the mid-range beautifully. Okay, let's check out the third sound now. On the third track, I'm using the Mercurial uh, Euphoria amp sim. Clean channel on the amp. This is a guitar amp plug-in. So 412 speaker cabinet, uh, sort of speaker simulation. Um, I'm using a TS-808 or Tube Screamer style pedal in front of the amp. I'll turn it on and off. Okay, sometimes, you know, fuzz is cool. Sometimes an overdrive is cool. It just depends on what kind of sound you're going for. So this is just that guitar amp plug-in. Not a lot of lows going on, it's just grindy mids and top end. Still warm on the top end, but pretty grindy. Let's turn on my clean amp track now. And now the DI too. 
it's all three. I'll turn off the grind. So you can hear the lows stay all tight and clean. You got tons of lows there without distorting the lows at all, just only distorting the top end. Uh, you get this great attitude without compromising the sub and you know low bass in your bass tone. Now all three of those tracks are bussed out one single bus fader and I'm adding a few plugins on the bus so I'm going to show you what those are right now. This is the main one really. Uh, it's the Steven Slate virtual mix rack. So with this you can do EQ, compression, all kinds of stuff. So I'm adding some compression with the distressor style compressor, a little bit of EQ using this Neve style compressor, or Neve style EQ, excuse me. If I turn off the Steven Slate plugin, it'll shut all these plugins off. So you can hear the effect without it and with it. Using the Neve style EQ, I'm adding a little 3.2K right here. Got about 60 dB of gain reduction using this distressor. Those are the main effects I'm really using in the Slate plugin. This is a tape sim plugin from UA A800. Turning it on and off. Just adds a little bit of tape character. And this is the bigger bass setting on this fat effects from Logic. You can hear it's adding sub and enhancing the bass frequencies quite a bit. So those are the three plugins that I have going on the bus. So just to summarize my approach to get killer modern rock bass guitar sounds, I'm gonna record a DI track and it's gonna be a real clean DI with just a little bit of compression on the input. And I will sometimes use an amp sim on the input as well, but only monitoring through it, which UAD allows me to do. I don't record the sound of that amp sim, I just print the track clean into my DAW. Then what I'm gonna do is mult it. Okay, here's the DI right here. Two tracks below are the exact same track. I've just copied down to two different tracks. And I set those all to go out one bus in Logic. Uh, the first track I'm gonna treat with compression and EQ. That's the DI track, adding a little bit of sub, a little bit of low 60 hertz, sometimes up to 100 hertz to the, uh, to, to the DI track and a little bit of compression. Next track down is gonna be my clean amplifier track. I'm gonna use that mainly for mids and definition to the tone. It's kind of the track I actually have loudest in the mix, to be honest, just the clean amp track. And that's this Galleon Kruger GK800 uh, amp sim from Universal Audio. I started out, by the way, on there with the Rock Tight Bass B preset, if anybody's interested, if they wanna try it, and they've got that plug in. And then down on this third track right here, I'm using the Euphoria amp sim uh, for all my grind and distortion. This is a guitar amp sim from Mercurial. I'm using the uh, TS-808 style pedal in front of the clean channel on the amplifier to uh, add some grind to the sound. All three of these signals go out of bus, out one fader. I use this uh, A800 uh, tape sim as well as the FAT effects, uh, which is a Logic exclusive effect to add a little bit of sub bass. Uh, if you've got something like Waves Renaissance bass or something like that, it'll be a similar effect. Try the bigger bass setting if you're a Logic user and if you've got this fat effects, this is a really, really killer plugin. And last but certainly not least is Steven Slate uh, Virtual Mix Rack, where I'm mainly using this FGN Neve style EQ to add a little bit of 3.2K for uh, the top end kind of treble of the bass, some definition there, adding maybe a dB and a half at 110 hertz using this, just a little bit more lows. And I'm also using the distressor style compressor here, set at six to one, getting about six dB of gain reduction on the peaks. Uh, for a little bit of compression right at the end of the chain. Now, by the way, if you use a digital modeler of some sort, you can do this as well. If you've got, let's say, a Line 6 Helix, I've got Helix Edit here up on the screen. Uh, this is a sound that I call uh, clean slash rat bass. Okay, so what I'm doing with this is I've got a, an SVT style amp sim on one uh, path up here with a 410 cabinet uh, impulse response. Down on the lower path here, and this is a parallel amp path running running through the Helix. I've got a Marshall style amps uh, sim here with a 412 cabinet. 
and uh, I'm running a rat distortion in front of that uh, in the Helix. So exact same thing where I've got a clean SVT style bass amp and then a distorted Marshall style amp using a rat in front of the, the virtual Marshall. I don't have the clean DI on this, but I do have a clean amp track and a distorted amp track in the Helix. You could even send these out different outputs on the Helix into your DAW if you're recording or if you're playing live with one, you could send them out uh, two separate outputs. And with those two separate outputs coming out, then you'd have separate control over the clean amp signal and the dirty amp signal. So I hope this video helps you get some great modern rock and heavy rock bass guitar tones in your tracks. And hey, please hit subscribe if you dug the video, hit the little bell beside the subscribe and that'll give you an alert every time I put out a new video. Hit the thumbs up if you dug the video, I really appreciate it. Hey, thanks for being here. I am Pete Thorne, I'll see you soon. Take care.